This is Tim Albright with an aviation special talking about Rosie Rivers with me to talk about that is Erica Carroll and Christy Mitchell. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Tim. Hi, nice to be here, Tim. Good to see you in your new hair. Black of. Could you, it's not new. It's 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 it really old is. hair. It it's is just, old hair. It's, it's pre pandemic hair. It's a new hair. It's very old. <laughs> we we were talking earlier how old it really is. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so Erica, you you got you you have personally been involved with, with Rosie Rosie Rivers for a number of years. Um, I got involved, I guess, probably about three years ago now. Um, but we're going to talk for a second. Uh, we get into a. a project that you and Christy were involved in um, in a Denver area school here uh, in a second. But really quickly, for somebody who's never been in, you know, involved with Rosie Riveters or exposed to Rosie Riveters, explain to people really briefly what it is uh, that that organization uh, aims to do. Thank you. So Rosie Riveters is an amazing nonprofit based out of Virginia that provides um, STEM kits and STEM education to all children um, with a heavy focus on girls and building girls' confidence one STEM kit at a time. Um, there's a lot that goes into the actual doing of the kit and not working off of directions and giving a girl confidence, just being able to build something and thinking like, yes, I can do it. I can do complicated things and catching that them at an early age. Um, so we're always looking at that elementary school level before like all that real STEM kit um, programming is available like in middle school and high school. So we focus on that elementary age. So let me be a little bit blunt here. How did somebody who's been in the AV industry for so many years get involved with a STEM organization? That's a great question. So for me personally, um, I never went to college. I never graduated college. I went to, to art school for college, but I didn't graduate. And I found myself in a very technological industry that I absolutely love. And what I discovered is that AV is literally STEM or even STEAM coming together fully represented. That's science, technology, education, arts, and math. Yep. That is AV. So when we had an opportunity, Jennifer Goodyear is my partner in building the fundraiser every year we had an opportunity to actually get involved in our, in our environment. And we heard about Rosie Riveters and we got so excited because it's an, it's an easy pathway to show children how to see AV as a career path within STEM because it's literally all around us and they love the technology. And, you know, it, it's so easy to, to wow kids, you know, when they go to amusement parks or concerts, live events, when they get to actually yeah. feel and experience AV. All right, Christy, now we're going to bring you in on this. How did we're, we're talking about a, a Denver area school, <laughs> Denver area school that uh, Rosie Riveters and, and you, you guys work together to bring, you know, a number of these kits. Uh, we'll, we'll get to what the kits involved in, in a second. But Christy, how did you get you know, involved in this? And, and what were you what was your initial uh, thought process in, in getting involved with Rosie? Well, first and foremost, um, women in AV, we just we we connect with each other and when we connect one to another to another to another it becomes this incredible incredible network right so uh before before this project i don't think that i had really known you erica right i don't think we had known each other and well mainly because erica has been all over the place having fun in the rv but i she's not local to me and even though mersive is and uh, through CoWave at our group, Colorado Women in AV and IT, Dana Sanders Nickel, uh, who works with the farm, she knew of Erica or was friends with Erica already and said, hey, I have this, you know, I've been talking with Erica about this Rosie Riveter stuff. Like, do you think maybe this would be a good, good thing for us to do? And there it went, you know, off to the races. So, um we started out with the 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 standard what we what we're doing and as far as what you know the the original effort and then an initiative with women in AV to to support Rosie Riveters with these uh, these kit kit packing parties. Am I saying that right, Erica? Yeah. Kit yeah. packing parties. We started with those, and it's a really good way for all of our our local women to to have communion and and pack these kits. And um, Erica will tell you a little bit more about the the harmonicas in just a moment. And then we saw a need for us to not just get involved in making those kits and distributing those kits, but 
I thought, well, we've got a really big education focus in the Denver market as far as AV is concerned. I met these ladies at um, a trade show from Aurora Public Schools and, and asked if they would be interested in doing a little bit more or having us do a little bit more for them. One conversation again led to another, to another. And we're talking about impressing these kids and being tactile learners. We were impressing the guidance counselors by that word that came to our CoAVID events um, at links and other places with all the technology that we do in AV. So the adults were even impressed by what we were doing. So again, one thing led to another and a kit packing party turned into what was, so what are the numbers, Erica? I'll turn it over to you now. You're better at the numbers. <laughs> yeah, so we had um, 11 schools involved in Aurora County Public Schools. That was 28 classrooms um, oh. that were involved just in this this one big initiative, um, which I love because we get to engage with the con with the companies and the schools that are in our own backyards. But it also gives us an opportunity to show those kids that there's companies near you that you could go work at. It's not like some pie in the sky, you know, people who want to work at Disney, oh, but Disney's so far away. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a Disney. There's a lot of really cool technologies and manufacturers, you know, right in your own backyard. So let, let's get back to the, the packs for a second. Um, Erica, it was last year or year before last because uh, you sent my daughter uh, Sophie one. It was a binary, yeah. right? Yeah. You guys te teaching how to do you know, basically coding, right? Yep. Uh, with, with binary and, and Which beads. I want to do. I want to do that one. Eris and I want to make. I have one right here. I'll send it to you. Good. Okay. Give my address later. So Sophie did it fine. I couldn't figure it out. That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> That's why we do this. Exactly. Um, what was the what was the pack? What was the the um, the thrust of this year's? Um, um, I, I guess the, the, this year's education. So every year we want to add to our kit offerings and, you know, tying something STEM and the kits that Rosie Riveters already has, tying it back to AV some way. So the first year, like you mentioned, was binary coding, which allowed us to talk about um, control programming and even the ALEXA is a very simple way for kids to understand that programming. So the second year um, was a a project based on sound waves. And basically they built harmonicas out of popsicle sticks and rubber bands. I don't know, Christy, if you still even have yours. She made it. She made one at the party and kept it. <laughs> I, made two. I made two because I broke one because I used it too much. Oh, um, I promptly had to move out of that apartment. That is why I moved away is because uh, all the because complaints. Because you had noise complaints. Yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish, in fact, you know, this is a great segue to the app because yeah. I wish I had known about the sound app at that point. So I could have at least made it a case for why I was being such a loud <laughs> dork. Um, <laughs> but instead, I was yeah. just being incredibly immature. So we were packing harmonica kits, which led to the conversation of how can we tie this more into AV? Chrissy, you've already mentioned the sound app. I feel like more serious, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we wanted to show kids uh, how t how they can measure their own sound waves in decibels. And yeah. we knew that, you know, there's basic programming that is already available. Um, so I uh, recruited one of my developers at Mersive, who it, his wife is an elementary school teacher as well. And he built us a web app uh, at sound.mersive.app that allows you to measure your sound in decibels. And if you hit in the top 10, you make it onto the leaderboard. Um, oh, so nice. it made it a competition. So furthering the conversation about this competition, once we got Christy involved and she goes, we have an entire school district. Well, that sort of oh, up yeah. the ante and somebody at some point, I actually think it was Brittany, at Rosie Riveter said, well, you know, maybe we can, you know, give away some headphones or do like a, oh, she said, let's do a silent disco. And I said, yeah, let's give away some headphones. And Christy goes, where are we going to get 30 headphones? That's not, how are we going to do that? <laughs> like, from who? <laughs> 30 who headphones does, is nothing. Who does audio in the audio visual industry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I started making some phone calls. And, um, and an hour call, later, like sprinkle yeah. your fairy dust and an hour later <laughs> has a it, set of sure headphones. 
yeah, so we had a class set of Shure headphones, but this also ties, you know, directly to what you were saying about you get a bunch of women to, if you want something done, ask a woman. And number two, we are all networked together. So if there's somebody I don't know, I can get to know somebody real quick. It's true. So it worked out really well. So we ended up with a a class set of headphones for a silent disco so that these kids in these 11 schools, 28 classrooms could compete for a silent disco. And I, if you don't mind, Tim, I just want to, I want to share my excitement because there's the portion of this where we're getting the people in our industry and AV involved on a local level, but then taking it that step further where we had um, over 15 volunteers. And I am so incredibly proud to say that that 15, that, that group of volunteers was almost damn near half, half women, half men. And cool. I, I say this and I, I want to share my immense um, pride in saying this because although women in our industry are only at 12% right now, 88% of our industry is men. And so you cannot have a conversation about furthering the institution of vocational knowledge within the audiovisual industry without including 88% of men. And we have to, and women can get things done, which also included all of us going out to our coworkers, the, the people on our team, the guys on our team and saying, hey, would you show up for the kids today? Would you show up for the kids today? And that was, that was the ask. But the answer to that was so overwhelming. Fred Skirty from Daylight via Legrand showed up with his screen panels to teach the kids about the screen. I mean, it was amazing. Um, uh, Steve Whitehurst, star engineer at Liberty, showed up and was uh, did a. I mean, we were all split up in different classrooms, and I was in the media classroom, of course, because we uh, we got covered by um, CBS. We got covered, but we were covered and by at least four. Um, for news stations, local news stations. So I was in that classroom, but there was a lot going on throughout the throughout the the day as well. And they were getting to they were getting real life boots on the ground knowledge um, from the people in our local AV industry. So uh, on behalf of CoWaven and the people and the volunteers that were there, I'm incredibly proud to be able to say that this started with you know an idea that turned into a, a kit that turned into a packing party, that turned into a bunch of sponsors, that turned into a local grassroots effort, that turned into boots on the ground from the AV industry directly to help these and educate these children. I want to add on to that also, because throughout all of this, the CoWavit group has built a great relationship with Aurora County Public Schools, that it just makes it that much easier to re-engage and get back in those classrooms next year Mm -hmm. to keep talking about these kits and in AV. When I, t- when I say we talk about AV within the kits, there's a pamphlet in each one of these that shows all of the different, not all of them, five of the main so careers that you could take within AV. <laughs> um, it even talks about, um, you know, how much you can earn on average. And a lot of this is taken from the Avixa foundations and, you know, okay. their studies that they've done over the years. So it's hard concrete evidence for our industry to show these kids that this is a viable pathway within STEM. Well, and, and just to, to one more thing, I'm so, but this, you got me going now. You got me going now. Um, I'm warmed up. Um, not, not only that, but I want to touch back on, you know, the, the guidance counselors and the, the employees of rural public schools that helped facilitate this process coming into our environment and seeing what we do uh, at links, I, you know, I'm watching the awe and wonder and all the magic happen with, with an adult in the room, uh, three days prior to us going to Aurora for, for the event, um, at Altura Elementary and those conversations that began, you know, that was kind of like putting a really beautiful, you know, tying a beautiful bow on it right, right before the, the, the big, the big presentation, because we had a conversations for months leading up to this with Aurora Public Schools who keep immaculate data about their students, immaculate data about their 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 student, the students' parents, and saying that, you know, if we were interested, we could get involved in so many different ways of helping not only the students, but helping the parents with a career path in AV and IT as well. 
Um, so shout out to Junho Du from Aurora Public Schools for the immaculate data that he keeps and wanting to keep this message uh, pushing. They're, they're already, when you were saying this, Erica, I got an email this week. Can we do this again in the fall? And I'm like, yes. Yes. Always yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Always yep. Yes. We'll make it happen. So as we wrap up here, I want to ask both of you the same question. And Erica, I'm going to start with you because you, you've been in, involved with a number of these a common refrain in the industry. This is industry-wide. I'm not picking on any organization or any manufacturer or integrator. We don't have enough workers, right? There, there is not enough people interested in the AV industry. And, and part of it is, you know, it's it's an old trope where the best, where, where the worst kept secret, the best kept secret in, 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 in IT or, or in, in technology. Um, people simply don't know what we do, right? You know, um, my buddy Rich Fragoza still tells his mom that he he repairs VCRs for crying out loud, right? <laughs> Um, what does getting in front of young people this early, you guys mentioned elementary school, right? And I know you've done junior highs as well, uh, middle schools. What does getting in front of young people this early do to the future of the industry? Well, first and foremost, we've had this issue for a long time of people saying we don't have the next generation of, yeah. of AV professionals. And while we can't fix that problem in the next five years with this initiative, we can certainly fix it in the next decade, um, or at least contribute to it, if not fix it. Yeah. Um, but something that Christy just brought up is the guidance counselor uh, opportunity as well. If we can reach out to even the high school level guidance counselors and you know people who are informing kids about career paths, Typically, if you go to them and you say, hey, do you know what AV is? They'll be like, mm, I don't know, projector maybe. Um, but if you went to them and you said, hey, I have this cool video, which we have resources from Avixa. We even have resources from Cedia about what AV is. If you showed that to a guidance counselor and they, they finally, something clicks and then you go, okay, now can you think of a student who might be interested in this? I guarantee you that they would be interested. So some of the work we're doing is, yes, getting in front of the kids at a young age, but we're also advocating for these local groups, like in Colorado, same thing in Dallas. Our Dallas, the Dallas group, they are on is. fire. Yep, They have created a, a reputation with uh, Lake City, Lake, Lake Dallas Elementary mm -hmm. School, and they have re-engaged multiple times going back for career days. And as, as soon as you can just inform somebody that we exist, they can start making that referral for us into our own industry. And they get excited. Oh, shout out Catherine Cordina. Shout out Kelly Perkins for that work. Shout yeah. out uh, Lisa Peebler for uh -huh. all, because those are, those are the ladies. And shout out to all the rest that I don't know of or, you know, but I know those three are involved in that down there. Yeah. Because I just talked to him a couple weeks ago. Christy, same question is, is from your perspective, what does this do for folks, you know, for the industry as we look, like, like Erica said, the next, the next decade, the next two decades? So I, I want to, I, I want to reference the fact that, you know, I, you know, I, I always say we, we back into this industry from one direction or another. I mean, I'm a musician. Erica was talking about not going to college. I went to college, but I didn't graduate either. And I've never publicly said that. I've never publicly said that until right now. And I think it's important right now to say that because I thought that I was, I was lucky enough to go to college for, for a little bit and realize that, that wasn't for me and have the aptitude and the will and the, the way to get backed into this industry and find a career path that made me happy and successful. Uh, so many kids do not have those resources. And so it is an incredible passion of mine to say, look, there are there are kids in these blue collar families in underprivileged communities that if we just gave them the opportunity that, man, they don't have to look at, well, I can get a GED and go work at McDonald's. I can work on a job site and I can be a level one technician and I can work my way up from being a level one technician all the way to the CEO of the company because that's real. It's still, it's still real that you have that opportunity within our industry. Nobody's mucked it up yet. You know, we've still got opportunities where you can go from, from point A all the way to point Z and above, you know, that was not supposed to be an Amazon reference. But my point here is 
that we need to be focused on on people that are that are ready and willing to have these opportunities in life and not just what a career path in AV looks like because it's six degrees from somebody that you know because that's how this is right now that is the structure six degrees from Kevin Bacon you're in AV you know we need to look outside of what that six degrees is and start preparing our our industry for its own future Erica, as, as we, we do in here, you, you guys mentioned Dalla, Dallas. I mean, you mentioned, oh, we, we started talking about Denver here. You mentioned Dallas. Um, if somebody's listening to this, somebody's watching this and they're going, hey, um, I, I'd like a Rosie River party. Um, you know, I made no, no, no bones about the fact that I live in St. Louis, right? St. Louis is a great town. And, and I, as I'm formulating this question here and writing my notes, I'm like, well, you got NFL cities. Forget that. We don't have an NFL team in, anymore in St. Louis. So... How about baseball cities, right? Or, or in, in, in all seriousness, if somebody's watching this or listening to this and go, I would love this in my kid's school. I would love this in my local school district. How do they do that? So either you can go directly to Brittany Greer at Rosie Riveters. If you want a shortcut, you can reach out to me. Um, <laughs> don't reach out to me. I don't know how to do that. You reach out to Eric. <laughs> at avgives.com. Um, and we will literally just share all of the resources that we have. We'll tell you how to reach out to public schools, what kind of conversations to have, who to talk to in your area. And if you just want to have a packing party, you can do that too. And then we can send it to another city. If, you know, our first year we worked specifically within um, the Blue Star Network. So military families uh, were, yeah. were within those school districts. Um, but if you want to do it in your area, you know, just get in contact. I, you know, we're we're all about spreading the word. It is something to be said, Erica, that we should maybe start putting some re resources together for how to get involved with your local community, like your local, like like what we did with Aurora. Now that we've done this a couple times, I think. <laughs> you I'm know, getting, I, I'm getting ideally, questions too. I've got somebody that reached out to me from Nebraska. Asking yeah. how they can get involved with Rosie Riveter. So I'm really thankful that this message is is starting to spread. And yeah, like Erica said, if you what yeah. what whatever facet that you would like to participate, we we would like to facilitate. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if you are not, there's all kinds of different ways that people give. Right? There's people that like to give monetarily. There's people like that like to give with service. I'm a service person, obviously. So mm -hmm. um, if you're a money person, we love money too. Um, and what, what is that website again, Erica? AVGives.com. That's AVGives.com. <laughs> and also at, hit your bosses up for money. I, it worked for me. <laughs> so. Thank you both so much. Uh, Christy Mitchell, how do people connect with you if they would like to? You know, I like the LinkedIn route always. So it's Christy Mitchell. Um, shouldn't be too hard to find, uh, but it's spelled... Did we do the Christ with the IE one already on one of your podcasts? I think we did. It's Christ with an IE and then that Mitchell. Works, I mean, just try it. Just try it. You'll find me. You'll find me. Like, like our producer. And I, just like yes. Our and I also work for Liberty. Uh, so please go check out Liberty. And, you know, and to all of you integrators out there, you should be selling more, you know. <laughs> All right. Erica Carroll, how do people connect with you, ma'am? Uh, you can find me in all the places at the Erica Carroll and uh, obviously at avgives.com. Yeah, right. see us there. For for me, don't follow me anywhere, uh, but go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv. You'll find this program and a host of others, all that and more at avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is, is AV, AV Nation. Nation. This is AP Nation.